Prayer is an invocation or act that seeks to activate a rapport with an object of worship, typically a deity, through deliberate communication. In the narrow sense, the term refers to an act of supplication or intercession directed towards a deity, or a deified ancestor. More generally, prayer can also have the purpose of thanksgiving or praise, and in comparative religion is closely associated with more abstract forms of meditation and with charms or spells. Prayer can take a variety of forms, it can be part of a set liturgy or ritual, and it can be performed alone or in groups. Prayer may take the form of a hymn, incantation, formal creedal statement, or a spontaneous utterance in the praying person. Today, most major religions involve prayer in one way or another, some ritualize the act, requiring a strict sequence of actions or placing a restriction on who is permitted to pray, while others teach that prayer may be practiced spontaneously by anyone at any time. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The English term prayer is from medieval Latin precaria, petition, prayer. The Vulgate Latin is oratio, which translates Greek prosoich in turn the Septuagint translation of Biblical Hebrew to pila tefila. <laughs> Act of prayer Various spiritual traditions offer a wide variety of devotional acts. There are morning and evening prayers, graces said over meals, and reverent physical gestures. Some Christians bow their heads and fold their hands. Some Native Americans regard dancing as a form of prayer. Some Sufis whirl. Hindus chant mantras. Jewish prayer may involve swaying back and forth and bowing. Muslims practice salat kneeling and prostration in their prayers. Quakers keep silent. Some pray according to standardized rituals and liturgies, while others prefer extemporaneous prayers. Still others combine the two. Friedrich Heiler is often cited in Christian circles for his systematic typology of prayer which lists six types of prayer, primitive, ritual, Greek cultural, philosophical, mystical, and prophetic. Some forms of prayer require a prior ritualistic form of cleansing or purification such as in Gusel and Wudu. Prayer may be done privately and individually, or it may be done corporately in the presence of fellow believers. Prayer can be incorporated into a daily thought life, in which one is in constant communication with a God. Some people pray throughout all that is happening during the day and seek guidance as the day progresses. This is actually regarded as a requirement in several Christian denominations, although enforcement is not possible nor desirable. There can be many different answers to prayer, just as there are many ways to interpret an answer to a question, if there in fact comes an answer. Some may experience audible, physical, or mental epiphanies. If indeed an answer comes, the time and place it comes is considered random. Some outward acts that sometimes accompany prayer are, anointing with oil, ringing a bell, burning incense or paper, lighting a candle or candles, see, for example, facing a specific direction i.e. towards Mecca or the East, making the sign of the cross. One less noticeable act related to prayer is fasting. A variety of body postures may be assumed, often with specific meaning mainly respect or adoration associated with them, standing, sitting, kneeling, prostrate on the floor, eyes opened, eyes closed, hands folded or clasped, hands upraised, holding hands with others, a laying on of hands and others. Prayers may be recited from memory, read from a book of prayers, or composed spontaneously as they are prayed. They may be said, chanted, or sung. They may be with musical accompaniment or not. There may be a time of outward silence while prayers are offered mentally. Often, there are prayers to fit specific occasions, such as the blessing of a meal, the birth or death of a loved one, other significant events in the life of a believer, or days of the year that have special religious significance. Details corresponding to specific traditions are outlined below. Topic: <inaudible> Origins and Early History. Anthropologically, the concept of prayer is closely related to that of surrender and supplication. The traditional posture of prayer in medieval Europe is kneeling or supine with clasped hands, in antiquity more typically with raised hands. The early Christian prayer posture was standing, looking up to heaven, with outspread arms and bare head. This is the pre-Christian, pagan prayer posture except for the bare head, which was prescribed for males in Corinthians 11-4. In Roman paganism, the head had to be covered in prayer. 
certain Cretan and Cypriot figures of the Late Bronze Age, with arms raised, have been interpreted as worshippers. Their posture is similar to the flight. Posture, a crouching posture with raised hands, observed in schizophrenic patients and related to the universal, hands up, gesture of surrender. The kneeling posture with clasped hands appears to have been introduced only with the beginning high medieval period, presumably adopted from a gesture of feudal homage. Although prayer in its literal sense is not used in animism, communication with the spirit world is vital to the animist way of life. This is usually accomplished through a shaman who, through a trance, gains access to the spirit world and then shows the spirit's thoughts to the people. Other ways to receive messages from the spirits include using astrology or contemplating fortune tellers and healers. Some of the oldest extant literature, such as the Sumerian temple hymns of Enheduanna c. 23th century BC, are liturgy addressed to deities and thus technically prayer. The Egyptian pyramid texts of about the same period similarly contain spells or incantations addressed to the gods. In the loosest sense, in the form of magical thinking combined with animism, prayer has been argued as representing a human cultural universal, which would have been present since the emergence of behavioral modernity. By anthropologists such as Sir Edward Burnett Tyler and Sir James George Fraser, reliable records are available for the polytheistic religions of the Iron Age, most notably ancient Greek religion, which strongly influenced Roman religion. These religious traditions were direct developments of the earlier Bronze Age religions. Ceremonial prayer was highly formulaic and ritualized. In ancient polytheism, ancestor worship is indistinguishable from theistic worship. See also Euhemerism. Vestiges of ancestor worship persist, to a greater or lesser extent, in modern religious traditions throughout the world, most notably in Japanese Shinto and in Chinese folk religion. The practices involved in Shinto prayer are heavily influenced by Buddhism. Japanese Buddhism has also been strongly influenced by Shinto in turn. Shinto prayers quite frequently consist of wishes or favors asked of the kami, rather than lengthy praises or devotions. The practice of votive offering is also universal, and is attested at least since the Bronze Age. In Shinto, this takes the form of a small wooden tablet, called an emma. Prayers in Etruscan were used in the Roman world by augurs and other oracles long after Etruscan became a dead language. The Carmen Arval and the Carmen Salaire are two specimens of partially preserved prayers that seem to have been unintelligible to their scribes, and whose language is full of archaisms and difficult passages. Roman prayers and sacrifices were often envisioned as legal bargains between deity and worshipper. The Roman principle was expressed as do ut des, I give, so that you may give. Cato the Elder's treatise on agriculture contains many examples of preserved traditional prayers. In one, a farmer addresses the unknown deity of a possibly sacred grove, and sacrifices a pig in order to placate the god or goddess of the place and beseech his or her permission to cut down some trees from the grove. Celtic, Germanic, and Slavic religions are recorded much later, and much more fragmentarily, than the religions of classical antiquity. They nevertheless show substantial parallels to the better attested religions of the Iron Age. In the case of Germanic religion, the practice of prayer is reliably attested, but no actual liturgy is recorded from the early Roman era period. An Old Norse prayer is on record in the form of a dramatization in skaldic poetry. This prayer is recorded in stanzas 2 and 3 of the poem Sigurdrifjamal, compiled in the 13th century poetic Edda from earlier traditional sources, where the Valkyrie Sigurdrifa prays to the gods and the earth after being woken by the hero Sigurd. A prayer to Odin is mentioned in Chapter 2 of the Volsunga saga where King Rerir prays for a child. In stanza 9 of the poem Adrunargrader, a prayer is made to Kind Whites, Frigg and Freya, and many gods in Chapter 21 of Jomsvikinga Saga, wishing to turn the tide of the Battle of Jorungavar, Hakan Sigurdsson eventually finds his prayers answered by the goddesses Orger Holgebruer and Irpa. Folk religion in the medieval period produced syncretisms between pre Christian and Christian traditions. An example is the 11th century Anglo Saxon charm Acherbot for the fertility of crops and land, or the medical We Ferstus. The 8th century Wessebrunn prayer has been proposed as a Christianized pagan prayer and compared to the pagan Voluspa and the Merseburg incantations, the latter recorded in the 9th or 10th century but of much older traditional origins. In Australian Aboriginal mythology, prayers to the Great Wit are performed by the clever men and clever women, or kaji. 
These aboriginal shamans use maben or mabane, the material that is believed to give them their purported magical powers. The Pueblo Indians are known to have used prayer sticks, that is, sticks with feathers attached as supplicatory offerings. The Hopi Indians used prayer sticks as well, but they attached to it a small bag of sacred meal. Approaches to prayer Direct petitions The most common form of prayer is to directly appeal to a deity to grant one's requests. Some have termed this as the social approach to prayer. Atheist arguments against prayer are mostly directed against petitionary prayer in particular. Daniel Dennett argued that petitionary prayer might have the undesirable psychological effect of relieving a person of the need to take active measures. This potential drawback manifests in extreme forms in such cases as Christian scientists who rely on prayers instead of seeking medical treatment for family members for easily curable conditions which later result in death. Christopher Hitchens 2012 argued that praying to a God which is omnipotent and all knowing would be presumptuous. For example, he interprets Ambrose Bierce's definition of prayer by stating that the man who prays is the one who thinks that God has arranged matters all wrong, but who also thinks that he can instruct God how to put them right. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Educational approach. In this view, prayer is not a conversation. Rather, it is meant to inculcate certain attitudes in the one who prays, but not to influence among Jews, this has been the approach of Rabbi Nubachia, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi, Joseph Albo, Samson Raphael Hirsch, and Joseph B. Soloveitchik. This view is expressed by Rabbi Nassan Sherman in the overview to the Art Scroll Siddur p. 13. Among Christian theologians, E. M. Bounds stated the educational purpose of prayer in every chapter of his book, The Necessity of Prayer. Prayer books such as the Book of Common Prayer are both a result of this approach and an exhortation to keep it. <laughs> Rationalist approach In this view, the ultimate goal of prayer is to help train a person to focus on divinity through philosophy and intellectual contemplation meditation. This approach was taken by the Jewish scholar and philosopher Maimonides and the other medieval rationalists. It became popular in Jewish, Christian, and Islamic intellectual circles, but never became the most popular understanding of prayer among the laity in any of these faiths. In all three of these faiths today, a significant minority of people still hold to this approach. Topic: <laughs> Experiential approach. In this approach, the purpose of prayer is to enable the person praying to gain a direct experience of the recipient of the prayer or as close to direct as a specific theology permits. This approach is very significant in Christianity and widespread in Judaism, although less popular theologically. In Eastern Orthodoxy, this approach is known as hesychasm. It is also widespread in Sufi Islam, and in some forms of mysticism. It has some similarities with the rationalist approach, since it can also involve contemplation, although the contemplation is not generally viewed as being as rational or intellectual. Christian and Roman Catholic traditions also include an experiential approach to prayer within the practice of Lectio Divina, historically a Benedictine practice in which scripture is read aloud, actively meditated upon using the intellect but not analysis, possibly using the mind to place the listener within a relationship or dialogue with the text that was read, a prayer spoken, and finally concludes with contemplation, a more passive experiential approach than the previous meditation, which is characterized by the Catechism of the Catholic Church as an experience experience of consciously being attentive, and having a silent love toward God, which the individual experiences without demanding to receive an experience. The experience of God within Christian mysticism has been contrasted with the concept of experiential religion or mystical experience because of a long history or authors living and writing about experience with the divine in a manner that identifies God as unknowable and ineffable. The language of such ideas could be characterized paradoxically as experiential as well as without the phenomena of experience, the notion of religious experience can be traced back to William James, who used a term called religious experience in his book, The Varieties of Religious Experience. 
The origins of the use of this term can be dated further back. In the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries, several historical figures put forth very influential views that religion and its beliefs can be grounded in experience itself. While Kant held that moral experience justified religious beliefs, John Wesley in addition to stressing individual moral exertion thought that the religious experiences in the Methodist movement paralleling the Romantic movement were foundational to religious commitment as a way of life. Wayne Proudfoot traces the roots of the notion of religious experience to the German theologian Friedrich Schleiermacher (1768–1834), who argued that religion is based on a feeling of the infinite. The notion of religious experience was used by Schleiermacher and Albert Richel to defend religion against the growing scientific and secular critique, and defend the view that human moral and religious experience justifies religious beliefs. Such religious empiricism would be later seen as highly problematic and was during the period in between world wars famously rejected by Karl Barth in the 20th century religious as well as moral experience as justification for religious beliefs still holds sway some influential modern scholars holding this liberal theological view are Charles Raven and the Oxford physicist theologian Charles Coulson the notion of religious experience was adopted by many scholars of religion of whom William James was the most influential the notion of experience has been criticized. Robert Scharf points out that experience is a typical Western term, which has found its way into Asian religiosity via Western influences. The notion of experience introduces a false notion of duality between experiencer and experienced, whereas the essence of Kensho is the realization of the non-duality of observer and observed pure experience does not exist, all experience is mediated by intellectual and cognitive activity. The specific teachings and practices of a specific tradition may even determine what experience someone has, which means that this experience is not the proof of the teaching, but a result of the teaching. A pure consciousness without concepts, reached by cleaning the doors of perception, would be an overwhelming chaos of sensory input without coherence. Abrahamic religions <inaudible> Hebrew Bible In the Hebrew Bible prayer is an evolving means of interacting with God, most frequently through a spontaneous, individual, unorganized form of petitioning and or thanking. Standardized prayer such as is done today is non-existent, although beginning in Deuteronomy, the Bible lays the groundwork for organized prayer, including basic liturgical guidelines, and by the Bible's later books, prayer has evolved to a more standardized form, although still radically different from the form practiced by modern Jews. Individual prayer is described by the Tanakh two ways. The first of these is when prayer is described as occurring, and a result is achieved, but no further information regarding a person's prayer is given. In these instances, such as with Isaac, Moses, Samuel, and Job, the act of praying is a method of changing a situation for the better. The second way in which prayer is depicted is through fully fleshed out episodes of prayer, where a person's prayer is related in full. Many famous biblical personalities have such a prayer, including every major character from Hannah to Hezekiah. New Testament. In the New Testament prayer is presented as a positive command Colossians chapter 4 verse 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. The people of God are challenged to include Christian prayer in their everyday life, even in the busy struggles of marriage 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5 as it brings people closer to God. Jesus encouraged his disciples to pray in secret in their private rooms, using the Lord's Prayer, as a humble response to the prayer of the Pharisees, whose practices in prayer were regarded as impious by the New Testament writers Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. Throughout the New Testament, prayer is shown to be God's appointed method by which we obtain what he has to bestow Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 to 11, Matthew chapter 9 verses 24 to 29, Luke chapter 11 verse 13. Further, the book of James says that the lack of blessings in life results from a failure to pray James chapter 4 verse 2. 
Jesus healed through prayer and expected his followers to do so also. Mark chapter 16 verses 17 to 18, Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. Topic: <inaudible> Judaism. Observant Jews pray 3 times a day, Shacharit, Minha, and Ma'ariv with lengthier prayers on special days such as the Shabbat and Jewish holidays including Musaf and the reading of the Torah. The Siddur is the prayer book used by Jews all over the world, containing a set order of daily prayers. Jewish prayer is usually described as having two aspects, kavana intention and kiva the ritualistic, structured elements. The most important Jewish prayers are the Shema Yisrael, Hear O Israel, and the Amidah, the standing prayer. Communal prayer is preferred over solitary prayer, and a quorum of ten adult males a minyan is considered by Orthodox Judaism a prerequisite for several communal prayers. There are also many other ritualistic prayers a Jew performs during their day, such as washing before eating bread, washing after one wakes up in the morning, and doing grace after meals. <laughs> Rationalist approach. In this view, the ultimate goal of prayer is to help train a person to focus on divinity through philosophy and intellectual contemplation. This approach was taken by Maimonides and the other medieval rationalists. One example of this approach to prayer is noted by Rabbi Stephen Weil, who was appointed the Orthodox Union's Executive Vice President in 2009. He notes that the word, prayer, is a derivative of the Latin, precari, which means, to beg. The Hebrew equivalent, Tefila. However, along with its root, pelel, or its reflexive, lippelel, means the act of self-analysis or self-evaluation. This approach is sometimes described as the person praying having a dialogue or conversation with God. <laughs> <laughs> Educational approach In this view, prayer is not a conversation. Rather, it is meant to inculcate certain attitudes in the one who prays, but not to influence. This has been the approach of Rabinu Batya, Yehuda Halevi, Joseph Albo, Samson Raphael Hirsch, and Joseph Dov Soloveitchik. This view is expressed by Rabbi Nassan Sherman in the overview to the Art Scroll Siddur, p. 13. Note that Sherman goes on to also affirm the Kabbalistic view see below. Topic. Kabbalistic approach Kabbalah uses a series of kavanot, directions of intent, to specify the path the prayer ascends in the dialogue with God, to increase its chances of being answered favorably. Kabbalists ascribe a higher meaning to the purpose of prayer, which is no less than affecting the very fabric of reality itself, restructuring and repairing the universe in a real fashion. In this view, every word of every prayer, and indeed, even every letter of every word, has a precise meaning and a precise effect. Prayers thus literally affect the mystical forces of the universe, and repair the fabric of creation. Among Jews, this approach has been taken by the Chassidei Ashkenaz, German pietists of the Middle Ages, the Arizal's Kabbalist tradition, Ramchal, most of Hasidism, the Vilna Gaon, and Jacob Emden. Christianity Christian prayers are quite varied. They can be completely spontaneous, or read entirely from a text, like the Anglican Book of Common Prayer. The most common prayer among Christians is the Lord's Prayer, which according to the Gospel accounts e.g. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9-13 is how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. The Lord's Prayer is a model for prayers of adoration, confession and petition in Christianity. In medieval England, prayers particularly the Paternoster were frequently used as a measure of time in medical and culinary recipe books. Christians generally pray to God or to the Father. Some Christians e.g., Catholics, Orthodox will also ask the righteous in heaven and in Christ, such as Virgin Mary or other saints to intercede by praying on their behalf intercession of saints. Formulaic closures include through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, through all the ages of ages, and in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is customary among Protestants to end prayers with, in Jesus' name, Amen, or 
in the name of Christ, Amen. However, the most commonly used closure in Christianity is simply, Amen, from a Hebrew adverb used as a statement of affirmation or agreement, usually translated as so be it. In the Western or Latin rite of the Roman Catholic Church, probably the most common is the Rosary. In the Eastern Church, the Eastern rites of the Catholic Church and Orthodox Church, the Jesus Prayer. The Jesus Prayer is also often repeated as part of the meditative hesychasm practice in Eastern Christianity. Roman Catholic tradition includes specific prayers and devotions as acts of reparation which do not involve a petition for a living or deceased beneficiary, but aim to repair the sins of others, e.g., for the repair of the sin of blasphemy performed by others. Other forms of prayer among Catholics would be meditative prayer, contemplative prayer, and infused prayer discussed at length by Catholic Saints St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Jesus. Topic: Pentecostalism. In Pentecostal congregations, prayer is often accompanied by speaking in an unknown tongue, a practice now known as glossolalia. Practitioners of Pentecostal glossolalia may claim that the languages they speak in prayer are real foreign languages, and that the ability to speak those languages spontaneously is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Some people outside of the movement, however, have offered dissenting views. George Barton Cutton suggested that glossolalia was a sign of mental illness. Felicitas Goodman suggested that tongue speakers were under a form of hypnosis. Others suggest that it is a learned behavior. Some of these views have allegedly been refuted. Topic: <laughs> Christian Science. Christian science teaches that prayer is a spiritualization of thought or an understanding of God and of the nature of the underlying spiritual creation. Adherents believe that this can result in healing, by bringing spiritual reality into clearer focus in the human scene. The world as it appears to the senses is regarded as a distorted version of the world of spiritual ideas. Prayer can heal the distortion. Christian scientists believe that prayer does not change the spiritual creation but gives a clearer view of it, and the result appears in the human scene as healing. The human picture adjusts to coincide more nearly with the divine reality. Christian scientists do not practice intercessory prayer as it is commonly understood, and they generally avoid combining prayer with medical treatment in the belief that the two practices tend to work against each other. Prayer works through love, the recognition of God's creation as spiritual, intact, and inherently lovable. Islam The Arabic word for prayer is salah. In Islam, there are five daily obligatory prayers that are considered as one of the pillars of the religion. The command to ritual prayer occurs repeatedly in the Quran. The prayer is performed by the person while they are facing the Kaaba in Mecca. There is the call for prayer, Adan, where the muezzin calls for all the followers to stand together for the prayer. The prayer consists of actions such as glorifying and praising God such as mentioning Allahu Akbar God is great while standing, recitation of chapters of the Quran such as the opening chapter of the book al bowing down then praising God, prostrating sujud then again praising God and it ends with the words, Peace be with you and God's mercy. During the prayer, a Muslim cannot talk or do anything else besides pray. Once the prayer is complete, one can offer personal prayers or supplications to God for their needs that are known as dua. There are many standard invocations in Arabic to be recited at various times e after the prayer and for various occasions e for one's parents with manners and etiquette such as before eating. Muslims may also say dua in their own words and languages for any issue they wish to communicate with God in the hope that God will answer their prayers. Certain Shia sects pray the five daily prayers divided into three separate parts of the day, providing several hadith as supporting evidence, although according to Shia Islam, it is also permissible to pray at five times. Baha'i Baha'u'llah, the Bab, and Abdul Baha wrote many prayers for general use, and some for specific occasions, including for unity, detachment, spiritual upliftment, and healing among others. Baha'is are also required to recite each day one of three obligatory prayers composed by Baha'u'llah. The believers have been enjoined to face in the direction of the Qibla when reciting their obligatory prayer. 
The longest obligatory prayer may be recited at any time during the day, another, of medium length, is recited once in the morning, once at midday, and once in the evening, and the shortest can be recited any time between noon and sunset. Baha'is also read from and meditate on the scriptures every morning and evening. Eastern religions In both Buddhism and Hinduism, the repetition of mantras is closely related to the practice of repetitive prayer in Western religion rosary, Jesus prayer. Many of the most widespread Hindu and Buddhist mantras are in origin invocations of deities, e.g. Gayatri mantra dedicated to Savitar, Pavamana mantra to Soma Pavamana, and many of the Buddhist Dharani originate as recitations of lists of names or attributes of deities. Most of the shorter Buddhist mantras originate as the invocation of the name of a specific deity or bodhisattva, such as Om Mani Padmi Hum being in origin the invocation of a bodhisattva called Manipama. However, from an early time these mantras were interpreted in the context of mystical sound symbolism. The most extreme example of this is the Om syllable, which as early as in the Aitareya Brahmana was claimed as equivalent to the entire Vedas collection of ritual hymns. Buddhism In the earliest Buddhist tradition, the Theravada, and in the later Mahayana tradition of Zen or Chan, prayer plays only an ancillary role. It is largely a ritual expression of wishes for success in the practice and in helping all beings, the skillful means Sanskrit, upaya, of the transfer of merit Sanskrit, parinamana, is an evocation and prayer. Moreover, indeterminate Buddhas are available for intercession as they reside in awoken fields Sanskrit, Buddha Shetra. The Nirmanakaya of an awoken field is what is generally known and understood as a mandala. The opening and closing of the ring Sanskrit, mandala, is an active prayer. An active prayer is a mindful activity, an activity in which mindfulness is not just cultivated but is. A common prayer is. May the merit of my practice, adorn Buddha's pure lands, requite the fourfold kindness from above, and relieve the suffering of the three life journeys below. Universally wishing sentient beings, friends, foes, and karmic creditors, all to activate the Bodhi mind, and all to be reborn in the pure land of ultimate bliss. Yuan Yi Si Gong De Zhuang Yan Fu Jing Tu Shang Bao Si Zhang En Sha Ji San Tu Ku Pu Yuan Zhu Zhang Sheng Yuan Qin Zhu Jai Zhu Shi Fa Pu Ti Shin Tong Sheng Ji Le Guo The generation stage Sanskrit, Upati Krama of Vajrayana involves prayer elements. The Tibetan Buddhism tradition emphasizes an instructive and devotional relationship to a guru. This may involve devotional practices known as guru yoga, which are congruent with prayer. It also appears that Tibetan Buddhism posits the existence of various deities, but the peak view of the tradition is that the deities or yidam are no more existent or real than the continuity Sanskrit, santana, refer mindstream of the practitioner, environment and activity. But how practitioners engage yidam or tutelary deities will depend upon the level or more appropriately yana at which they are practicing. At one level, one may pray to a deity for protection or assistance, taking a more subordinate role. At another level, one may invoke the deity, on a more equal footing. And at a higher level one may deliberately cultivate the idea that one has become the deity, whilst remaining aware that its ultimate nature is sunyata. The views of the more esoteric yana are impenetrable for those without direct experience and empowerment. Pure Land Buddhism emphasizes the recitation by devotees of prayer like mantras, a practice often called nembutsu. On one level it is said that reciting these mantras can ensure rebirth into a Sambhogakaya land Sanskrit, Buddha Shetra after bodily dissolution, a sheer ball spontaneously co-emergent to a Buddha's enlightened intention. According to Shinran, the founder of the Pure Land Buddhism tradition that is most prevalent in the U.S., for the long haul nothing is as efficacious as the Nembutsu. On another, the practice is a form of meditation aimed at achieving realization, but beyond all these practices the Buddha emphasized the primacy of individual practice and experience. He said that supplication to gods or deities was not necessary. Nevertheless, today many lay people in East Asian countries pray to the Buddha in ways that resemble Western prayer, asking for intervention and offering devotion. Hinduism. 
Hinduism has incorporated many kinds of prayer Sanskrit, pratana, from fire-based rituals to philosophical musings. While chanting involves by dictum recitation of timeless verses or verses with timings and notations, dhyanam involves deep meditation however short or long on the preferred deity, God. Again the object to which prayers are offered could be a person's referred as devtas, trinity or incarnation of either devtas or trinity or simply plain formless meditation as practiced by the ancient sages. These prayers can be directed to fulfilling personal needs or deep spiritual enlightenment, and also for the benefit of others. Ritual invocation was part and parcel of the Vedic religion and as such permeated their sacred texts. Indeed, the highest sacred texts of the Hindus, the Vedas, are a large collection of mantras and prayer rituals. Classical Hinduism came to focus on extolling a single supreme force, Brahman, that is made manifest in several lower forms as the familiar gods of the Hindu pantheon. Hindus in India have numerous devotional movements. Hindus may pray to the highest absolute god Brahman, or more commonly to its three manifestations, a creator god called Brahma, a preserver god called Vishnu and a destroyer god so that the creation cycle can start afresh Shiva, and at the next level to Vishnu's avatars earthly appearances Rama and Krishna or to many other male or female deities. Typically, Hindus pray with their hands the palms joined together in pranam. The hand gesture is similar to the popular Indian greeting Namaste. Sikhism The Ardas Punjabi, Aradasa is a Sikh prayer that is done before performing or after undertaking any significant task, after reciting the daily banis prayers, or completion of a service like the Path scripture reading, recitation, kirtan hymn singing, program or any other religious program. In Sikhism, these prayers are also said before and after eating. The prayer is a plea to God to support and help the devotee with whatever he or she is about to undertake or has done. The artas is usually always done standing up with folded hands. The beginning of the artas is strictly set by the 10th Sikh Guru, Guru Gobind Singh. When it comes to conclusion of this prayer, the devotee uses words like, Wahe Guru please bless me in the task that I am about to undertake. When starting a new task or a call Purak, having completed the hymn singing, we ask for your continued blessings so that we can continue with your memory and remember you at all times, etc. The word, Ardas, is derived from Persian word, Arazdashat, meaning a request, supplication, prayer, petition, or an address to a superior authority. Ardas is a unique prayer based on the fact that it is one of the few well known prayers in the Sikh religion that was not written in its entirety by the Gurus. The Ardas cannot be found within the pages of the Guru Granth Sahib because it is a continually changing devotional text that has evolved over time in order for it to encompass the feats, accomplishments, and feelings of all generations of Sikhs within its lines. Taking the various derivation of the word Ardas into account, the basic purpose of this prayer is an appeal to Wahe Guru for his protection and care, as well as being a plea for the welfare and prosperity of all mankind, and a means for the Sikhs to thank Wahe Guru for all that he has done. Topic. New religious movements Wiccan prayers can include meditation, rituals and incantations. Prayers are seen as a form of communication with the god and goddess. This may include prayers for esbat and sabbat celebrations, for dinner, for pre-dawn times or for your own or others' safety, for healing or for the dead. In realism rites and practices vary from initiation ceremonies, to sensual meditation. An initiation ceremony usually involves a Raelian putting water on the forehead of a new member. Such ceremonies are performed on certain special days on the Raelian calendar. Sensual meditation techniques include breathing exercises and various forms of erotic meditation. In Ekankar, one of the basic forms of prayer includes singing the word, Hu, which is pronounced as Hu, a holy name of God. This can be done with eyes closed or open, aloud or silently. Practitioners may experience the divine ek or holy spirit. Practitioners of thergy and western esotericism may practice a form of ritual which utilizes both pre-sanctioned prayers and names of God and prayers from the heart that when combined allows the participant to ascend spiritually and in some instances induce a trance in which God or other spiritual beings may be realized. 
Very similar to Hermetic Kabbalah, and Orthodox Kabbalah, it is believed that prayer can influence both the physical and non-physical worlds. The use of ritualistic signs and names are believed to be archetypes in which the subconscious may take form as the inner god, or another spiritual being, and the prayer from the heart to be that spiritual force speaking through the participant. In Thelema, which includes both theist as well as atheist practitioners, adherents share a number of practices that are forms of individual prayer, including basic yoga, asana and pranayama, various forms of ritual magic, rituals of one's own devising often based upon a syncretism of religions, or Western esotericism, such as the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram and star ruby, and performance of Liber Resh Vel Helios aka Liber 200, which consists of four daily adorations to the sun often consisting of of forehand, body positions and recitation of a memorized song, normally spoken, addressing different godforms identified with the sun, while there is no dogma within Thelema that expresses the purpose behind any individual aspirant who chooses to perform resh. It may be noted that the practice of resh is not a simple petition toward the sun, nor a form of worshipping. The celestial body that we call the sun, but instead uses the positioning of that source of light, which enables life on our planet, as well as uses mythological images of that solar force, so that the individual can perform the prayer, possibly furthering a self-identification with the sun, so that repeated application of the Liber Resh adorations expands the consciousness of the individual by compelling him to take a different perspective, by inducing him to look at things from the point of view of the sun. Prayer healing Prayer is often used as a means of faith healing in an attempt to use religious or spiritual means to prevent illness, cure disease, or improve health. Scientific studies regarding the use of prayer have mostly concentrated on its effect on the healing of sick or injured people. Meta-studies have been performed showing evidence only for no effect or a potentially small effect. For instance, a 2006 meta-analysis on 14 studies concluded that there is no discernible effect, while a 2007 systemic review of studies on intercessory prayer reported inconclusive results, noting that 7 of 17 studies had small, but significant, effect sizes. But the review noted that the most methodologically rigorous studies failed to produce significant findings. Some studies have indicated increased medical complications in groups receiving prayer over those without the efficacy of petition in prayer for physical healing to a deity has been evaluated in numerous other studies, with contradictory results. There has been some criticism of the way the studies were conducted, some attempt to heal by prayer, mental practices, spiritual insights, or other techniques, claiming they can summon divine or supernatural intervention on behalf of the ill. Others advocate that ill people may achieve healing through prayer performed by themselves. According to the varied beliefs of those who practice it, faith healing may be said to afford gradual relief from pain or sickness or to bring about a sudden miracle cure, and it may be used in place of, or in tandem with, conventional medical techniques for alleviating or curing diseases. Faith healing has been criticized on the grounds that those who use it may delay seeking potentially curative conventional medical care. This is particularly problematic when parents use faith healing techniques on children. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Efficacy of prayer healing. In 1872, Francis Galton conducted a famous statistical experiment to determine whether prayer had a physical effect on the external environment. Galton hypothesized that if prayer was effective, members of the British royal family would live longer, given that thousands prayed for their well-being every Sunday. He therefore compared longevity in the British royal family with that of the general population, and found no difference. While the experiment was probably intended to satirize, and suffered from a number of confounders, it set the precedent for a number of different studies, the results of which are contradictory. Two studies claimed that patients who are being prayed for recover more quickly or more frequently although critics have claimed that the methodology of such studies are flawed, and the perceived effect disappears when controls are tightened. One such study, with a double-blind design and about 500 subjects per group, was published in 1988. It suggested that intercessory prayer by born-again Christians had a statistically significant positive effect on a coronary care unit population. Critics contend that there were severe methodological problems with this study. Another such study was reported by Harris et al. 
Critics also claim that the 1988 study was not fully double-blinded, and that in the Harris study, patients actually had a longer hospital stay in the prayer group, if one discounts the patients in both groups who left before prayers began. Although the Harris study did demonstrate the prayed for patients on average received lower course scores, indicating better recovery. One of the largest randomized, blind clinical trials was a remote retroactive intercessory prayer study conducted in Israel by Leibovici. This study used 3,393 patient records from 1990 to 96, and blindly assigned some of these to an intercessory prayer group. The prayer group had shorter hospital stays and duration of fever. Several studies of prayer effectiveness have yielded null results. A 2001 double blind study of the Mayo Clinic found no significant difference in the recovery rates between people who were unbeknownst to them assigned to a group that prayed for them and those who were not. Similarly, the Mantra study conducted by Duke University found no differences in outcome of cardiac procedures as a result of prayer. In another similar study published in the American Heart Journal in 2006, Christian intercessory prayer when reading a scripted prayer was found to have no effect on the recovery of heart surgery patients. However, the study found patients who had knowledge of receiving prayer had slightly higher instances of complications than those who did not know if they were being prayed for or those who did not receive prayer. Another 2006 study suggested that prayer actually had a significant negative effect on the recovery of cardiac bypass patients, resulting in more frequent deaths and slower recovery time for those patients who received prayers. Many believe that prayer can aid in recovery, not due to divine influence but due to psychological and physical benefits. It has also been suggested that if a person knows that he or she is being prayed for, it can be uplifting and increase morale, thus, aiding recovery. See subject expectancy effect. Many studies have suggested that prayer can reduce physical stress, regardless of the god or gods a person prays to, and this may be true for many worldly reasons. According to a study by Centra State Hospital, the psychological benefits of prayer may help reduce stress and anxiety, promote a more positive outlook, and strengthen the will to live. Quote, Other practices such as yoga, tai chi, and meditation may also have a positive impact on physical and psychological health. Others feel that the concept of conducting prayer experiments reflects a misunderstanding of the purpose of prayer. The previously mentioned study published in the American Heart Journal indicated that some of the intercessors who took part in it complained about the scripted nature of the prayers that were imposed to them, saying that this is not the way they usually conduct prayer. Prior to the start of this study, intercessors reported that they usually receive information about the patient's age, gender, and progress reports on their medical condition, converse with family members or the patient, not by fax from a third party, use individualized prayers of their own choosing, and pray for a variable time period based on patient or family request. One scientific movement attempts to track the physical effects of prayer through neuroscience. Leaders in this movement include Andrew Newberg, an associate professor at the University of Pennsylvania. In Newberg's brain scans, monks, priests, nuns, sisters and gurus alike have exceptionally focused attention and compassion sites. This is a result of the frontal lobe of the brain's engagement Newberg, 2009. Newberg believes that anybody can connect to the supernatural with practice. Those without religious affiliations benefit from the connection to the metaphysical as well. Newberg also states that further evidence towards humans' need for metaphysical relationships is that as science had increased spirituality has not decreased. Newberg believes that at the end of the 18th century, when the scientific method began to consume the human mind, religion could have vanished. However, 200 years later, the perception of spirituality, in many instances, appears to be gaining in strength. 2009. Newberg's research also provides the connection between prayer and meditation and health. By understanding how the brain works during religious experiences and practices Newberg's research shows that the brain changes during these practices allowing an understanding of how religion affects psychological and physical health 2009. For example, brain activity during meditation indicates that people who frequently practice prayer or meditation experience lower blood pressure, lower heart rates, decreased anxiety, and decreased depression. Topic. Prevalence of prayer for health Some modalities of alternative medicine employ prayer. 
A survey released in May 2004 by the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, part of the National Institutes of Health in the United States, found that in 2002, 43% of Americans pray for their own health, 24% pray for others' health, and 10% participate in a prayer group for their own health. See also Topic Notes Topic References and Footnotes Topic External Links Media related to prayer at Wikimedia Commons <laughs>